Hello there, and welcome back to another Replay Roundup episode. My name is Kiant, I'm being joined by lovely Ixta today, and we are bringing you gameplay today. It's going to be a gameplay of the uh, tank that has disappeared from the game around six years ago. Uh, it is back for a limited time at the moment. It is, of course, you see it in between the two of us. The beloved Waffenträger auf E100. It's the tier 10 German tank destroyer that got replaced by the Grilla. I am hyped for that one. Indeed, so am I. Without any further ado, I'm going to throw us straight into the replay anyways. But for those of us who don't know how to speak German, it's the Waffenträger auf E100. Let's see how this goes. As we already see, conveniently, the Grill 15 directly in front of us. The tank that replaced the Waffenträger E100 in the tech tree so many years ago. Prior to my time in a world of tanks almost. Um, and you do see the Waffentrager looking at his his new uh, the new tank that replaced him, looking at the grill saying, Hello there, I am your big brother or your big sister here. Uh, let's see how this goes. We see the ELC even 90 already running down the one-two line to get the early spots. As you can see, top tier again, no artillery, which is you know, you love to see it when it happens in a tank like the Waffentrager, because getting hit by HE shells is gonna be an absolute nightmare for this tank. That was my biggest concern trying this tank out is I was so hesitant of getting hit by artillery shells. And already we see a TVP being spotted by the ELC and taking about almost a solid 800 damage for it. And now our Waffen Trigger player, which has about 50 seconds reload or so, is fully loaded aiming for the Skoda T50, who made a brave peek a moment ago. Yeah, now we see obviously the uh, five shell autoloader. It is the Jagdtiger gun, so it is uh, 560 alpha. 352 APC R pen, and I think the shell velocity is also extremely good, like 1600 meters per second or something. Basically, you got a laser of a gun, uh, you're just able to completely farm away at the enemies, but only one shot with a low roll as well into the TVP that did say goodbye to this game here uh, as the first tank to fall. And obviously, with the Waffen Trager here, a third shot, fourth shot finally does connect, but once again, only one shot into the enemy tank before that one dies. And now, to be honest, yeah, correct decision does take one more blind shot because what else are you going to do with only one shot left in the clip? And now he's going to reload. I like that he's also driving behind a uh, building to just, you know, keep the enemies from, from blind shooting him. It's as uh, those who don't know. Yeah, basically the turret. It's well, it's a tier 10 tank, but even a tier one could penetrate it. Yep. Uh, it's a matter of just simply uh, mitigating any potential risk or, you know, reducing any potential risk of taking any damage at all. Uh, so, you know, better safe than sorry while you're on a 50 second reload. We do see him use a uh, commander view for a moment. They're zooming out all the way to uh, sort of analyze the situation around him. He realizes he has a lot of teammates behind him and, you know, nobody really has the confidence to move forward. So he starts moving forward. I believe that's him putting markers down and his team follows him. Uh, as they go forward to try and aid the charioteer who just took a huge amount of HP loss right there. Yeah, I would sort of guess that that was 750 alpha hitting the charioteer. So uh, that is either the Grilla or the Fosh 155 back there. And now we see him just, you know, completely um, starting to empty his clip into uh, uh, into the bushes here. And now the Ferdinand does bounce the first one, but the second one does fly true. So uh, Ferdinand... One third of its hit points just completely gone. Indeed. Now, for anyone wondering why he was firing the clip is if you look right in, is it this corner right here? The CC Mark 1 was uh, was spotted. Uh, so he was trying to get some blind fire into there without moving too close and risking getting spotted himself. There we see the ELC is now spotted in the top left of our screen there. And now the Fosh 155 in the open, who has taken a bit of damage. I'm not too sure if that was uh, one of the blind fires from the Waffen Trigger, though. Mm. And now we uh, see a very good thing from him. He was uh, basically on reload still. Why does he expose himself? Well, he was trying to sort of anticipate where the Fosh was going to be. But obviously, the Fosh seems to be on reload as well now. Uh, so it does move away. Now, still a bit of time remaining. You have like a 50 second reload to balance out that gigantic, ginormous uh, damage potential. And now we'll have to see how he actually does against the Contra Caro. Does put in the second, does put in the third as well. German accuracy coming in. Another shot. And the last one does bounce here, but still, three out of five on such a small target as the lower plate of the Contro Caro. That is nothing to sneeze at, especially at that distance. Definitely not. 1.6k, and honestly, when I saw that, I was surprised how true those shells were flying. That was beautiful uh, shots right there. Um, you know, shame you couldn't pick up the kill, but you know what? It was only 200 damage at the end anyway, so not a lot left, left there anyways for him to pick up. Uh, that being said, though, 
the Contra Caro does go down to an ally. And now all that's left on this flank so far, as far as we are aware, is the ELC even 90 and a Fosh 155. As we can see that a 9-0 line is being heavily pressured by the enemy tanks. Uh, and it's just merely a question of when they decide to start pushing through. They will get spotted by the Progetto 65 and T55A from the side as they start pushing through. And by the 50TP directly in front of them. But the key thing here is we need to clear this flank up before they start pushing through the city and start winning that flank. Uh, as you can see, the Fosh 155 taking a bit of damage there, and the Waffentrager here trying to aim between the, the the opening in the bunker there to try and return fire at the Fosh, but doesn't quite manage to find the angle as the Fosh runs away into cover for now. That's going to allow our players here to start moving up slowly and closing in distance. Exactly. The ELC there on the left is not really a threat. The biggest threat, basically, uh, that the ELC is giving is uh, that he would spot out the Waffentrager for the Fosh. Uh, so far, I believe he has not been spotted yet. That's mm, maybe about to change. There was a bush beside him. But yeah, obviously, the Waffentrager, it is a large target. And uh, I think it has the worst camel rating in the entire game. Now, the ELC uh, deciding to uh, suicide himself here into the loaded gun of the Waffentrager. Th still three shots available. That is still over 1,600 clip potential that the Waffentrager still wants to dish out. 482. That is a one shot. If I've ever seen one, he does peek over. He does kill him with auto aim. Please, uh... If you, if you are going to auto aim, then just do it to, for target acquisition. Don't do it for killing. And now two good track shots here into the Grilla. But the Grilla actually now turning out to be a big threat here as uh, the Waffentrager is reloading. He can't really clip out on the Grilla anymore. Indeed. Imagine being that Progetto and just seeing a Waffentrager come straight over the ridge line like that. That's going to be oh, one no, of the no, no. scariest <laughs> sights in the game alongside going around the corner and being spotted by an FV 4005 or Jaeger. But as we can see, the 890 line has finally collapsed. The enemies have finally taken the city and all that's left really to defend is the T30, the Progetto 65 and the T55A, which is why our Waffentrager here was already making his way towards the middle to try and secure the middle, thinking that the Grill would get killed. But there was a, there was a bit of uncertainty there as the grill did survive and get into cover in time so it was a matter of waiting around to see if the ts5 manages to pick up the kill or not looks like he managed to do it unscathed and now it's a matter of heading back to the middle and trying to kill the tanks that are trying to push out of the city uh or just to find a better angle to fire at these tanks from and where you're not completely left in the open uh and you know the best place to do that on fisherman's bay is probably the middle so that's where he is heading to I mean, the thing is, yes, he still does have over 2,000 HP. Uh, I think he's running hardening, probably. Uh, but the problem being that every single tank on the enemy team is going to be able to penetrate him. Most importantly, the Type 4 Heavy uh, that does have, if if he has it equipped, this monstrous HE gun that would deal full damage onto the turret here. Um, also, the thing is, if you advance through the middle, then there might be... First of all, let's take a look at those shots here. He does trade one for one with the Panzer 7. Um, but there is the possibility that if you get spotted in the middle, uh, basically from the K line, from the A line that is not being spotted by his allies right now. Exactly. There we go. Uh, the it. enemy tanks can fire at you. So I'm not really the biggest fan of advancing through the middle right now, as you just cannot be sure to stay safe. This is true. This is true. And that's the T103 firing. And, you know, for those who aren't aware of the position, it's probably the rock at K6. Uh, which the T103 is chilling behind. He can peek either side of it to try and get shots down. He can also keep an eye on K1 position if anyone tries to push down from there. And now the Waffentrager going for a bunch of shots here on the Panzerkampfwagen and Type 4. Sorry, the Type 4. Uh, I believe he connected one and then he tried to secure with blind fire. Now he's going to try and pick up the kill on the E50. It looks like he did hit some of the blind fires and then he does secure the kill on the Type 4 who gets overly aggressive and comes around the corner. But in return, he eats a 531 shell from the Panzerkampfwagen 7. Uh, not the greatest of trades, but, you know, at least the Type 4 is dead. And now we do see the Chieftain prototype also going down to the Progetto 65, which now means that their base is more or less secured now. Uh, but the 5100 has been spotted, uh, unspotted for a relatively long time. Uh, so now we'll have to see what happens from here. With 5 HP left, there's not a lot he can do now. Uh, uh, just a sneeze from the enemies would be enough to, to kill him at this rate. Um... But we'll have to see how this goes. You know, on the bright side, thankfully, HE has been reworked and he can't get splash killed, right? Uh, exactly. Then again, if anyone so much as looks at him the wrong way, he's going to be dead in the water. But now I, I do like what he's doing. He's turning his back towards the enemy as he um, doesn't really yeah, have any armor to speak of anyway. And now 
Um, yeah, good decision to back away. I feel like the Panzerkampfwagen 7 could have snapped, but then again, if he does not connect his snap, then he's going to be dead. So, uh, yeah, both of those just Mexican standoff once again here. The Waffenträger does outspot the uh, Panzer 7, though, it seems. And now he just needs to get a clean shot here into the turret of the Panzer 7. You can see him aiming, aiming, aiming. And now the Panzer 7 did the mistake of turning his turret. So he's going to pick him up. And now the 5100 actually does get spotted. But in the red turn, the Waffenträger does get spotted. Woo! Risky gameplay here right now to uh, stay there and empty the clip after getting spotted. But probably one more connecting into the T103. We'll see soon, I guess. Um, but yeah, right now, 8.5k damage almost. He is on reload once again. So that was on 5 HP, a pretty, pretty big play. Indeed. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, or for the newer players who may not be as familiar, when there's when you're in a tank that's rear turreted, like the Waffenträger, where the turret is more towards the back, uh, it's sometimes more use, uh, useful <coughs> to, you know, reverse out if you're gun aimed at the enemies, because you expose less of your tank. And that's more or less what the Waffenträger was doing there for the Panzer Kampfwagen 7. It's a matter of minimizing how much of a target you give the opponents while also being able to fire back. So smart play there, managed to pick up some good damage there, and of course the Panzer Kampfwagen, as yourself, you said he made a bit of a mistake, and now we see the E50 coming out across the open to secure the kill on the Progetto, hoping to, you know, maybe get some more accolades and also pick up the kill on the Waffen Trigger, but it didn't quite work out that way for him. He's going to be thoroughly upset with the end of that situation there as he gets picked up, and now the Waffen Trigger just emptying out his entire clip there in the hopes that he blindfires someone. He does get spotted, if he didn't blind fire all those shells, he probably would have had a shot right now for the 5100, but I don't think it would have been smart to stick around to try and connect it, because he did get spotted, and the T103 is probably still back there covering the 5100, who's trying to retake the 1-2 line, uh, who, which is also what we see the T30 doing as the T30 finally decides to move off of the B1 position and support his allies here, as he does have all the HP on this team, and when we say all the HP, we really do mean every little bit of it. Uh, so now yeah, we'll exactly. And goes. Yeah, I mean, you see right now what exactly the effect of a hardening can be. Those additional HP, like, uh, I think the Waffenträger normally has 2,000 exactly. So if he had not had the hardening here, he would be dead right now. So uh, that is good choice of uh, equipment, I guess. And now the 5100 does get spotted. I didn't really like the first shot, but the T30 there is able to pick it up so the 5100 also dead now and uh remaining is the t103 um but yeah the t30 should have the hp to push him uh and still take a couple shots uh while you know getting closer towards that t103 but we'll have to see how this one goes indeed now t103 not really the most active tank this at this time around so probably taking the middle makes sense as you wouldn't expect him to take it indeed now honestly that 5100 shot I was worried for a moment there, but hey, uh, he did try to take a nice little position at F1 in the bush there, which is a really useful position not a lot of people make use of. It's situational, but it can be really powerful. He did manage to get a nice shot down the line there. Um, honestly, we'll have to see how this goes. The T103 might actually be on less than 933 HP because the Waffen Trigger did take a couple of blind shots at the rock, and we haven't seen the T103 since. There is a chance he might be lower. Uh, on lower HP, but we'll have to wait and see as the T30 is actually moving forwards and putting pressure now on the enemy's position. The question is, is the T103 still there? That's what we're going to have to wait and see as the T30 closes in and does spot the T103, who is still on 933 HP, meaning the Waffentrigger did not connect any of those blind shots. Now he's going to try and work his way around to try and find an angle behind this relatively potent position. There it is. Puts one in for 538. Two criticals. Tries to secure the kill with another one. Tries to go for it again in the hopes that the T103 reversed back out. But to no avail, if he did connect that, it would have killed the T103 at that rate. And it doesn't look like it did. So... Now it's a matter of just slowly moving across. I don't, I'm not a fan of moving across the open like this. I mean, for the most part, he's safe anyways. I mean, this game's probably secured at this rate. Hmm. Ooh, I don't know about that shot, uh, but. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one either, coach. And now the T30 actually in the a bit unfortunate position that uh, he has a pretty long reload. He probably snapped so the T103 might out reload the T30 and then we would have ourselves a one on one. We'll have to see about that one. 466 HP. Um, they are both sort of very tall tanks. That's a very awkward engagement here right now. Uh, just uh, eyeing each other and probably aiming at the turrets, which both of them cannot reliably penetrate. We'll have to see 57 seconds left here on the clock, but obviously the Waffenträger is going to be ready before that. I'm not sure 
sure what both of those are doing right now. But yeah, quarter of the reload still remaining, so around 12 seconds, I would say. And uh, yeah, the T103 does get one more connection into the T30, so the T30 actually low, very low HP. And now the, I'm, I mean, the T103 does seem to have a sort of sixth sense, but now the uh, T30 is actually going to push him out, probably helping his Waffentrager buddy out a little here to just let him get that much more damage and now we see nine and a half thousand damage here in the battle stats but i guess we can hop into uh the battle results and see if some blind shots connected indeed and now that we're heat indeed yeah that's eleven thousand one hundred and thirty eight damage what a staggering performance from the waffentrager as it comes back into the game for this brief amount of time six kills he picks up a mastery he picks up hand of god bruiser jewelers fire for effect but what you're all here for he picks up a confederate a high caliber and a top gun that being said let's take a look at the team score key feel free to take it away yeah, I mean, uh, once again, we got one of those replays where someone gets out the wheelbarrow, puts his team in it, and then just, you know, carries them over the finish line. 11k damage. That is, I mean, I have like 70,000 random games I managed to get above 11k once, so he's probably going to be happy with that as, uh, yeah, right now the Waffenträger is time limited, so, and also battle limited. But yeah, 1,344 XP, not the highest of XP games, but then again, that was because uh, he was a tier 10 and basically firing at uh, at tier 8s um, and also the uh, detailed report we can see he did lose a few credits on that one but um, honestly once you're getting in that 8 9 10 11 K damage game range uh, at least personally I don't really care if I lost credits on that one because I had such a good game then um, yeah overall good decision making by him one shot on the 5100 he could have aimed it better but uh, in the end uh, when he was driving into the middle um, he also recognized his mistake went out again and that was basically him securing the win for his team uh, just you know solo handed the T30 obviously at the end helping a little bit um, but then again who doesn't want to have a buddy in World of Tanks indeed that being said that is going to be it for this episode of Replay Roundup. We hope you liked it. Um, let us know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified of future videos. Ixta, I'll leave the last words to you. Yeah, once again, if you haven't already, and if you want to see one of your replays on Replay Roundups, don't forget to put Replay Roundup in the title when you upload your replays to what replays. That being said, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Let us know what you think down in the comments section below. Once again, I'm Ixta. This is Keyhand. We'll see you in the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe for more content. See you in the next one.